Chief Paul Vandergraaf, um, another weekend, and I guess if we can take it slow, I guess I'll apologize because in my story over the weekend, uh, when the communications officer put out the release today, there was one person given a ticket under the emergency. That has been That's right. Back. Yeah, so as I say, I, I missed that. I was down there for three hours, but I missed that. But also, if you can talk a little bit about... If you can talk a little bit about... Uh, what happened was a good gesture, but I guess you're not the happiest camper about it, given in terms of the coffee. <laughs> okay, listen. Um, let, let's be quick about the protests. So that has morphed into, to my opinion, a non-issue. It goes back to kind of where it was. Yes, we're still in a stay-at-home order, and yes, people shouldn't, but we can find every hour of a day where people are not abiding by those rules. So. What we have is we have a protest, and like I've said before, it wears on my staff, right? It, it is like, these are generally good people, and we, we may be on discord as far as beliefs, but at the end of the day, these are good people. So, um, but we have, a, we have a rule and we have an obligation, and a lot of people in the community tell me quite regularly that they don't want this to happen, and they want this to stop, and they're actually not, I think there's a certain section of our population who prefer that I send down a bunch of people and we'd arrest everybody, take them to cuffs and take them away and seize their signs and never let them do this again. And again, that's just not realistic nor practical nor anything we're going to participate in. So I believe, so what we have is we have an officer who's uh, done a really good gesture here with the, with the coffee, but it's, it sends a bit of mixed messages, right? So um, there's limited what I can say right now. We are, we are looking into the matter. Obviously, we want to see we want to see the background of what um, what was behind this and what happened to this um, and where this came from and, and, and we'll go from there. We are doing an internal review of that matter currently. I'll be the first to say I don't believe there was any ill intent on any part of the officer or anything like that. It was just a good gesture. It just might have been ill-timed or whatever. Moving on, you can see starting the frustration between the protest given there was roughly three people, maybe upwards of seven at the most on Saturday. But in relation to the farmer's market, there are a number of things questionable. Yeah, yeah. listen, um, it's, it's, I'm known down at the farmer's market. My wife and I make regular appearances down there on a Saturday morning. It's an absolute fantastic, great thing to do in the markets. I've always loved them. We, we, yeah, we're struggling right now. Um, so the farmer's market opened two weekends ago. Now this is our, we've completed two weekends. Um, so we're, we're living in our ease. So we're doing the engagement and the education piece. Um, but, but we all know what the end E looks like. And that's enforcement. Um, the farmer's market have very significant and very specific rulings within the current regulations that do allow them to operate. A farmer's market is considered a farmer's market as long as 51 or more percent of the boots within a farmer's market are agricultural or food. Um, and in this farmer's market, it's well above that. What we, what the, what the discord we have here is their non-essential store services that have uh, booths in the farmer's market. So it's like this, is there's no ill intent by the farmer's market. They're operating their farmer's market as a very nice farmer's market in a beautiful part of Coburg. Um, but it's a missed message. So we have, well, so certain businesses can't open and they're struggling and may not ever reopen. Yet other businesses, because they have a booth in the farmer's market, are allowed to operate. So it creates this, this sense of, of uncertainty. Ultimately, it falls to us to try to figure out this uncertainty. And I always say to people, the provincial government passes the regulations that we try to interpret and abide by. And there's never ever always clarity on that. So we're going to continue to engage this week with the farmer's market. Hopefully we can get the farmer's market to understand some of the grief that's being caused in the community by no intention of theirs, but the outcome of what they're doing is causing other issues. So we're hopefully we can come to some sort of agreement. Um, hopefully this lockdown ends in June 2nd. Hopefully the Saturday after June 2nd we can have one heck of a farmer's market with the appropriate pipers and, and the recognition from council and, and all of that and I hope we can really celebrate that day. But for now, but for now we really, I think we really got to kind of bring it back to, let's, let's stick to essential services in the farmer's market to honor and keep a level playing field for everybody. Like, like the first time we locked down, people could go to Walmart and buy a TV 
but it, but or uh, but the other stores couldn't open. But now they've actually closed off those those areas of the stores, and and I think that's what we call learning, and that's how we come. Yeah, okay, this is unfair because I'm a Costco or I'm a Walmart or I'm a No Frills, and I had other products. So we learned, we got better for the second or third lockdown. Now I think that we're at the same with the farmers market, and I, and I hope they see that I can't control what they do. But I can tell, I am sure they're hearing the, the, the amount of complaints. Um, I'm getting them. And all I'm saying is we're gonna continue to engage. Um, we're gonna work with them, try to create opportunities where people move a little bit quicker. And let's be honest, this has been a long year and a half for two years for people. And you get a beautiful day, like last Saturday or two Saturdays ago, it was sunny, it was cool, but it was still sunny out. And I know when we, my wife and I did our rounds, People were stopping me, hi chief, hey Paul, hey chief. And it was kind of awkward because we were doing everything we weren't supposed to be doing. Uh, so I didn't want to be rude. So for those that I just walked away, now you know why. But it, yeah, we got to create that curbside pickup. Get in, make your loops, get what you need and move along. Last question, with the beach decision coming, I believe May 31st, if I'm correct. Even that when I was down there yesterday, it's it's extremely hard for you guys and I, I would hope and i would think everybody realizes that but you can see i believe the order is you know you can sit to rest but you have to keep moving things like that so it's like so when you see people sunbathing when you see people you know with their tents yep. when you see people having picnics that's wrong yeah the weather caught us uh, let's be honest we had a beautiful weekend it's nice to get a 20 plus 22 degree weather in may, may we'll take it um we work very closely with, with the town, as you know, and, and we work very closely with town bylaw. As, as of today, town bylaw is upping their staff for their summer, summer cycle, and they're in training right now. Our people are training alongside with them to understand their world a little bit better. Um, there'll be a, there'll be a, a different plan. Um, we're gonna continue to support council in their decisions. I don't envy council in, in their decision-making process. This is not an easy thing. This is not an easy uh, challenge before them. So we'll let the uh, municipal legislation and that town council make their decision, send some decisions down to us, and we'll obviously help enforce. When it comes to the uh, stay-at-home lock, or uh, we're back into the same issue. Where it's, it sends discordant messages when you can't uh, have a tennis court open, or you can't sit on the beach, or you can't sit. So we're, we're, into, the, we're into this problem, it's not easy. Um, and again, uh, credit to the front line, police officers, bylaw officers, auxiliaries, and special constables because they're the ones out there trying to make headway out of this and trying to talk to people. And I gotta be honest, the people have been fantastic. That this this town has really come out and really supported our people and, and that's fantastic and we appreciate it. Truly, truly we do appreciate it. Um, it's just not easy. It's just not easy. So yeah, no, we're not, this coming into this weekend, we're gonna be moving people along. They're not gonna be sunbathing, I wouldn't think. And they're not gonna be setting up in picnics. And, and like us, hey, I, I'm happy to say that we learn, right? Like the Walmarts learned and that we weren't ready for this weekend on the beach. I gotta be honest, we didn't even have it on our radar. In fact, we had calmed down our, some of our, uh, just giving my people some break from the, the, the protest and things. So we, 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 we were not there and uh, maybe we could have, should have. So we, we'll redeploy, we repivot, we, we move forward.